quarter at, at six minutes after five. And we have guests that I've already basically introduced, old friends, uh, and Sandy, yes. thank you. And do we have any changes to the uh, agenda, Sarah? Amendment. We just need to add um, the driveway, the access permit for St Seth Stewart on Nellie Chase Road. Paul would like that done uh, virtually to get it started. Okay. What's the name of the person? Seth Stewart, not, I think, kind of new to the area. Okay, so with that, and believe it or not, after all that, we're almost on time. Reviewing proposed timeline for hearings and townwide vote on enhanced energy plan being drafted by the Middlesex Planning Commission with assistance from the Central Vermont Planning Commission. So Sandy, I guess that's you. Uh, yes, uh, the Planning Commission has been working for a little while with the Regional Planning Commission um, to draft an enhanced energy plan that would be part of the town plan, would be incorporated into the town plan. It needs to go through the same adoption process as the town plan, which you may remember from not that long back. We've recently adopted the town plan. There's a you know, a number of hearings that are required and notices that are required. I put together a, a, a tentative timeline so that we would make sure that it would be voted on at the general election in November. So we don't have to have a special election for it and plugged in dates for, um, or date ranges for hearings. The planning commission needs to have a hearing. Um, select board needs to have a hearing um, and, it needs to be reviewed. It needs to, you know, send copies to um, neighboring municipalities and to the regional planning commission. Uh, so that's what's in the um, updated Middlesex Town Energy Plan timeline. I just wanted to run it by the select board because you all have a role to play in this as well. The the outline or the adoption timeline that I drafted was uh, just based on sort of the minimum amount of time that um, that's needed for for these these various pieces. I just wanted to um, let you know that, that that's a, a tentative timeline, but since there are pieces that, that the select board need to do as well, I just wanted to share it with you. Okay. Did you send that um, in your letter, Sandy? Excuse me? Did you send that in your letter? I, I shared it with the town clerk. I sent it as a, I just forwarded yeah. the timeline to everybody okay. so they understand. Yeah, we we all we all received it. Okay. I, yeah, I, before we yeah. before we go through that, I, I'm really I don't know I'm having a bad day, but I don't remember ever talking about this before. Did we talk about this before? I mean, why we're doing this and why we're doing it now and Do all we, that kind of like stuff. Or we the planning commission or just we the town in general anybody i mean the i mean the the planning commission with the select board i Was don't recall talking about it between the planning commission and the select board no i remember the regional planning commission approaching the planning the middlesex planning commission and saying we uh we have the ability to help you with developing and uh putting out an enhanced energy plan here's reasons to do an enhanced energy plan um, it's often part of the town plans that towns adopt. It was not, we didn't have the wherewithal or the capacity to do it at the time that we did the town plan. Um, okay. And so we, uh, Theo Kennedy, one of the planning commission members has really been taking the lead on it and working with um, the regional planning commission. And similar to a town plan, it, it outlines um, you know, where we are in terms of energy in the town, what we'd like to see going forward. Um, it has some, some weight in the, uh, if it's passed, it has some weight as various energy projects get approved going forward. And the draft that we've been working on, we've been working on it for a, a few months, um, is a starting point, and you know we need to, to get town feedback and feedback from from the select board as well. And if 
it's not what folks want. It's okay. not what folks want. So is this is this something? I mean, I'm not, I'm I'm sorry. I just I need, I just need a little background. Is this sure. something we need to do now? Is this an urgent priority? It's it's not an urgent priority, um, though. Uh, you know, energy projects as the select board has seen, continue to, to move forward. And there's a, certainly a fair amount of interest in energy issues within the town of Middlesex. It's often a part of a town plan. And so where the Regional Planning Commission had the wherewithal to help us develop it, we thought it was good to seize that opportunity and move forward. Okay, so my last question is, and I'm sorry, I'm just trying to parse this out. I thought the big work for this year was the revision of the zoning regulations. So now we're focusing on this instead of the zoning regulations. And I don't know whether that means the zoning regulations are put off for a year or what it means. I don't think it means the zoning regulations get put off for a year. Um, we have that sort of on our, our tentative app plan to begin this summer, which was the time when the Regional Planning Commission would have some time to help us with it. Um, so that's what we're, what we're, we're, doing, we're doing there. Okay. All right. I just was, I was a little blindsided by this and I was thinking, gee, did I miss something that I, who knows? Okay. Thank you. So go ahead. Uh, so this was, um, you know, and I, and again, I guess I, I apologize if this is your first in introduction of this, um, you know, as with the town plan, it's usually something that the, the planning commission is, is responsible for and takes, and takes the lead on. So we did the, um, I expect we'll finalize a plan um, at our next meeting, which is tomorrow. And um, if that happens, um, the, the, the outline that I, I put forward here is what, what the adoption process would be for that. And it was mostly driven by figuring out a timeline that would work so that we could vote on it on election day in November and not have to have a special election. Can you remind me when the select board has to take it up? What's the range of time for select board? Um, it's in, uh, the P uh, planning commission would submit it to the select board in, in mid July. And then the select board would take it up in July and August and have a hearing in early September. Mm -hmm. Questions, anyone? Concerns? Okay. We have nothing further, I guess. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you. Thank you for your work, Sandy. Thank you. With the other planning commission members. Okay, so we are Moving right along to the second item on our agenda, which is approval of a setback waiver agreement between Emancipation Energy LLC and KCOS Holdings LLC. So the proposed solar array at 56 Center Raid may include, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I just have one quick and probably simple question before we start this. So I looked at the diagram you, you guys uh, sent out and the setback and all that. And the question I have is, it looked to me like you could change the length of the array, which now interferes in the setback, and add that capacity to one of the other runs and meet the 25-foot setback. So why is it so important that that particular array be that long that it interferes with the setback? Um, I, you're suggesting that we increase the length of some of the other rows. Is that what you're saying? Well, it just looked to me from looking at the diagram and I don't understand the engineering or the technology, but if you look to me, like if you took one panel or two panels off that, that row that intervenes with the setback and added them to one of the other rows, you'd have the same solar capacity and you would meet the setback requirement. Eric, I, I think just knowing the site, I'm pretty sure that it has to do with the topography, Peter. 
Um, it, it looks it looks as simple as that by looking at it from a, uh, just a one dimensional, but the topography out there, the the land undulates, and <clears throat> the way these are designed when you when you put the layout into a program called PV Syst, which is what Aegis uses, it it alters the performance of the uh, array. Yeah, I have to pay attention to this for a while yet. So it would it would require significant earth moving, or it's it's just. That's part, the, that's part that, that's part that's part I'm just trying to I'm just yeah, trying to understand. Sure. That's part of it, Peter. I mean, essentially, it's like a puzzle when you have a site and this site being uh, close to the the stream bank, where it's placed optimally optimally to a uh, reduce um, environmental impacts and b increase production. So you're always trying to get the most production you can out of the least impacts, and so it, where it's situated that's the solve for that. And so to the extent we have to drag it down, we would end up having to uh, do a little bit more clearing or live with shading. And so we need to maintain the buffer from the stream bank and we don't want to do any more clearing on the low side. And then if we wanted to solve uh, to get away from that set by, by, by moving sort of to the left, as you look at the picture, what TJ said is the, the, the undulation of the, of the earth would require more cut and fill. And the, and the thought okay. was, given that there's not a lot going on, there, there doesn't seem to be um, a huge downside to uh, encroaching six feet into the otherwise 25 foot setback in this particular location. I guess that's that, it, that seemed to be the uh, lowest cost uh, mm -hmm. achieving the best result. Oh, and that's, and that's fine, it's just, you know, we would prefer not to uh, make an exception to our setback, all things being equal. But I agree, it seems like a relatively minor incursion. I did, I did drive up there uh, uninvited and peer around and try and <laughs> try and figure out. But as you say, it's one thing looking at a flat diagram; it's another thing when you're standing up there. And and the other, the good news front, I, I understand the sensitivity to not uh, waiving your traditional setback requirements. The good news in, in this particular instance, it's not really Middlesex's setback requirement, it's the PUC's setback requirement, and you're not really waiving it, you're just agreeing to a consensual arrangement that the PUC can then decide whether they want to waive their requirement. So it doesn't sort of have really the precedential value necessarily that you might think about. Okay. And I want to point out one mistake in my I letter. Think we understood that. I think we understood that at the last uh, yeah. at the last meeting. I, I do for so sure. Other concerns, other board members? The Eric wants to talk. Uh, just for sake of clarity, in the second sentence of the second paragraph, there, there's a typo there. I, I said rule 5.115, uh, section 5, and it's still supposed to be 5.113, section 5. So that was just a typo. I just want to make sure that that, for the record, is corrected. Okay, thank you. Board members? No, this is Steve. I don't have any concerns. Okay. How about a motion? I don't either. Liz. How about a motion? I'll move that we approve this setback. And I'll second. Subscribed. I'll second. second that. Thank you, Steve. Steve, I'll second that. Okay, got it. Okay, all in favor of accepting the, uh, the setback agreement which has been presented to us, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, you're good. All right, thank you so much. Thank you for your time, everybody. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. You're welcome. Okay, goodbye, guys. Take care. Could you get me a glass of um, seltzer with wine, please? Hello? Okay. Uh, approving town zoning administrator Mitch Osecki as the town's new E911 coordinator. I, I'm Peter, may I speak? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, yes, with Mareka's retirement, we need somebody to be the e new E911 coordinator and Mitch has agreed to do this. It makes sense because when you 
uh, get a zoning app approved, especially if you're putting in a new lot, a new house and a new lot, you get a you get an E911 address. So that kind of combines both jobs in one, makes sense. What does he have to do? You know, there's all this dorky stuff where you have to measure a certain distance from some a certain intersection. I don't know. Mar is what Mariki used to do. You have to measure the entrance of the driveway from a, uh, the closest major intersection, and that creates the E911 number. It's not just a matter of just saying, you know, 25, 27, 29 on one side of the road. It's, there's a little bit of uh, GPSing to it. Did he volunteer or did you um, ask him to do it, Sarah? When Marika, when Marika had the job, we were all, and we knew she was going to retire. She talked to Mitch about it and he said, yep, that makes sense. And I just checked with him again last week and he said, yes, he was game for it. It, it really does make sense because that's the only, usually that's the only time you're going to get an E911 address unless you have to correct something that's screwed up. And you, we need a motion on that do you think yeah. yes we do yeah. this is steve i'll make a motion that we accept mitch's uh to have him as the e911 coordinator second thank you I Phil. Second. okay got it it's been moved and seconded to prove mitch as a boy he's got a lot of titles now I as know. our new e911 <laughs> coordinator all those in favor of the motion please say aye aye aye, aye. aye. Any opposed? Okay, congratulations, Mitch. He's an important man. Okay, and believe it or not, we're already down to approving our May 19th, 2020 select no, we're board not. minutes. No, you, no, you missed the treasurer's report. report. Treasurer. Treasurer's report, Dorinda. How could I forget Dorinda? And Dorinda has a lot on the agenda for tonight. Oh. Um, Okay, I apologize, Sarinda. Go That's ahead. Okay. So I sent you guys a preliminary um, stat budget status report to show, you show you where we're at right now. Dorinda, did you just send that? Uh, it came through as soon as I received it, which was about four o'clock. Okay, I didn't see that. It came through when the orders came through. Um, it's in with the oh. orders, Mary. Yeah, I, I haven't checked. Oh, so I haven't checked that. I'm going to go get my iPhone so I can look at it while you're talking. I can hear you though. So we're at um, 92, almost 93% of the budget with um, the June to go through and the rest of May. So I think we're going to probably come in over budget. Not sure, but <laughs> depends what happens in the next few weeks. Um, we're also, the other thing was to keep you up to date, we currently looks like we have about $422,000 left to collect in current taxes. Um, and we have $795,000 in the bank and our payables are $727 dollars so i think we have certainly we would have enough to make the um school payment and depending on again this is a concern to when um tax bills will go out so we probably i would not be surprised if we will end up having to short-term borrow the question would be how much we would want to short term borrow. And um, I think we might want to get ahead of the game because there may be a lot of towns out there trying to do it. Mm. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. How, how early is um, early? For what? Early for what? We'll start early to get it because there might well, be a lot. Of um, well, I know we can get through the rest of this year because we have the money in the money market account that we have used in the past and then paid back when we did taxes. And there's 270000 in there. But I don't know. At this point, they're talking about possibly going out for a revote on some school budgets. 
Really? Uh, it sounds like sounds like that idea kind of got squashed. I, that is going to be unbelievably bizarre if they revote school and town budgets. Yeah. Then we better borrow. We better borrow a year's worth of money. <laughs> so well, we'll just go status quo for now. But I'm just trying to keep you informed, and you guys can kind of think about: Should we borrow like, um, you know, six months worth of money? Should we borrow, you know, something like that? Or it's well, always just. Yeah, I think we need to. I think we need to see. Uh, there's there's so much up in the air right now with the question of whether there are going to be budgets revoted. Um, you know, I noticed the the uh, the listers want an extension on the grand list, which may or may not affect our ability to get out tax bills. Um, there's just a lot of stuff a lot of stuff going on, but certainly we have money. To get, how long do you think from the time we apply would it take to actually get the money? A couple of weeks? Yeah, I don't think it takes very long. Right. So, you know, I don't think we need to be worrying about it now. Okay. Um, it would be nice, and I only say this as a nice, to end the year without that debt on our books. Right. <laughs> Start out next year by going into debt. And I think we definitely will get through. There's no doubt we can get through the end of the year, just even if we have to go and use the money that's in the money market. Right. Right. I mean, that's what I... So I, I spent some time uh, looking over that report and it pretty much told me exactly what I expected. We have a number of categories where we're significantly uh, underspent or underestimated income. Our in, the income side of the equation actually looks pretty good. Of course, that doesn't say anything about what the actual tax collections are, but it looks pretty good where we, uh, as we know, where we run into trouble is in our favorite two areas, computer and equipment repair. And as I said to Steve this afternoon when we were talking, when the engine in the truck dies, we have no choice but to fix it. So that's just one of the things, one of the things we've got. But, you know, other than that, we're doing a good job of managing our expenses and we're right where we should be. So. Okay. Yeah, and as long as we can cover you know, that big bill. I mean, that'll wipe out everything we've got in the account right now, just about to the school tax. Yeah, but we should be getting, in the next few days, hopefully we'll get a bunch more money, right? We hope. Well, tomorrow's G day, right? Right, yeah. So, and yeah. so, uh, yeah, and the money's been coming in, but we'll see what happens. Like I said, there's only, uh, I say 344 left to come in or something. So oh, you said 422. 422. Okay, 422. Yeah, whatever I said before. I got too many numbers written down. Yeah. Right. Um, and you well, have seven five in the bank. I wrote them down. That's how I remember them. <laughs> okay. Is Peter, is there any hope? Um, probably nobody knows, but um in the 1.2 billion um coronavirus relief, is any of that going to any municipalities? You know, they keep talking about that, but nobody says, here's where you apply or here's when it's coming or, yeah. you know. I, yeah, I, I think it would just be given. I don't think you would even probably apply. I think it would be like something yeah, that the have, administration decides to give out or that the legislature decides to give out. When the when the state has this gigantic hole they're trying to fill, it just seems unlikely to me that they're going to be portioning out any significant amount of money to the towns. But, you know, the bottom line is we don't know. Nobody knows. Or at least nobody I know knows. We uh, started tracking all of our um, expenses. So we added a chart of account number and we're going to you know, so at least we'll know what this is costing the town rather than putting it through the individual budgets. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, the next thing I have is um, talking about taxes. The They passed the S-344 bill, which I sent yeah. to everybody earlier. Right. So that does give you the right to waive 
um, penalties and interest. And Dave Smith, who's a delinquent tax collector, we he's on, I see, so he can um, hear what the discussion is and weigh in on anything. Um, but I wanted you to see that and kind of we need to know how to move forward after tomorrow. Let the bill pass both the House and the Senate. And we yes. signed, yeah, and signed and, by the governor. Yeah. And it's effective July 1st or is it effective immediately? Immediately. Immediate. Huh. What do you have a recommendation for us, Dorinda? Well, we haven't assessed any late fees um, since March. So um, I would say certainly I would waive those late fees would be my, um, I mean, interest fees, not late fees, interest fees um, until this is over, possibly until the state of emergency ends. And I would um, consider waiving the 8% for this year. The bottom line is guys, I think we should, I think we should do it. When I saw those cars lined up at the airport get, getting food the other day, it caused me to totally freak out. I mean, if there's not many people that are that desperate, there were probably a lot of Middlesex residents in those food lines. And, you know, that 8% in the interest don't mean that much to the town. I mean, it all means something, but this is not the time to be penalizing anybody. No. I, don't think. I agree. So, yeah. I agree, but I mean, what's when you say for this year, what's the end date if it's this year? Is it like- Well, if it's this seven? year, it's the 8%. The penalty would be the 8%, which will be due if they don't pay their taxes in full by tomorrow. Well, yeah. But I mean, like, is this through December 31st? Or, I mean, I'm just trying to... Well, Mary, I think there are two components to it. In terms of the in terms of the penalty fee, my recommendation would be we waive the penalty fee for this year. And I think that's all we're allowed to do under the bill. Isn't that right, Dorinda? You can waive it or you can um, delay it, I think. Um, uh, yeah, but it's just for this year. Our sole... Uh, our support I staff. Believe the interest, yes. I believe the interest, I read the bill the other day. Yeah. I believe the interest is till the end of the year, correct? The end of the calendar year? The interest is on um, while we're in a state, this whole thing applies to while we're in a state of emergency. Okay. Okay. But that's June 15th right now. Well, can I just chime in here? Because oh, I got no, the no, no. That's the, that's the stay at home thing, Mary, not the. Okay. I would just. <laughs> I mean, Wait, Sarah has something she wants to say. Okay, go ahead. So I'm looking at the bill right here, and it doesn't take very long for me to just go over it. Do you want me to read it to you so you guys understand what it says? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So uh, getting to the meat of it, the legislative body of a municipality is authorized to, one, extend or establish a new timeline, time, and method of payment for the municipal property tax and statewide education property tax collected by the municipality. So you can extend the time. Two, establish a grace period for, decrease, or waive any penalty, interest, or fee imposed on taxpayers for the late payment of the municipal property tax or statewide education property tax. Three, reduce the minimal, reduce the municipal property tax rate. <laughs> um, and oh, yeah. <laughs> the acts permitted by the subsection may be adopted by majority vote of the legislative body of a municipality and shall expire on January 1st, 2021. Right. So that's okay. what you got. Okay. So my recommendation would be we don't change the tax rate <laughs> or any of those things, but that we don't waive the penalty, whatever the right word is for that, and don't charge any interest from whenever we stop charging interest back in March until the end of this calendar year. You're gonna to need to warn that. Yeah. Why does, why does it have to be warned? Because it requires an action from the municipality and it requires some, that's something that really needs to be warned. They need to put that on the agenda saying that the 
board, the select board is going to take this step, may take this step at its next meeting. And, uh, you know, that next meeting is going to be on June 2nd. So that is right around the corner. You still might even be collecting late payments at that time. That'll give you enough to, that'll give you enough room to decide to have a firm warned legislative vote saying it was warned, they voted on it, and uh, by your, your collection of your late taxes should not be affected because it's gonna be pretty early in the game. Does it make any sense, and I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud here, does it make any sense to have a special meeting to do that in the next few days since that question is going to come up? It does. Are we going to get it resolved? I would. Sure. We can have a we can have a five minute we can have a five minute Zoom meeting. Right. And do this tomorrow or the next day and have it done. And then when asked, uh, David and Dorinda can say it's a done deal. You don't have to worry about it rather than saying, it looks like it might happen, but it's not gonna happen until June 2nd. How does everybody feel about doing this? I yeah. mean, does yeah, everybody let's... agree we should do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah we should do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I agree so too. Why don't we warn, warn an emergency meeting or a special meeting for Thursday at five o'clock? Okay. Yeah. Hold on, you're with me. Thursday is the 21st, right? Yep. I'll set up the Zoom meeting. Okay. Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Sarah, isn't that that- yeah, all good. That's good for me. Yep. Sarah, isn't that number 870 blah, 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 your, your number meaning that the town's number? And it's always going to be the same, the meeting ID. I don't know. I just scheduled the meeting and it gives and they give me a number. That's pretty much it. Maybe that is always it. Well, yeah. I mean, when I when I do something, I do these yoga classes on Zoom and it's always the same number. Right. Well, this will give you this will give us a chance to put this warning on the uh front porch form for Thursday, which is cutting a little tight, but just so people are fully apprised of what's going on. Yeah, but nobody knows nobody's going to nobody's going to object to this. They're going to be relieved. <laughs> if anything. Well, there might be some people who said, well, "I had to hustle to get my tax payments in, and now you're telling me that there's no eight, those eight percent penalty." I'm just, I, I the bill just passed. We couldn't do this until the other day. Yeah. I'd say we're acting in a pretty timely manner. Okay. I think so too. All right. When so we put out Thursday at five p.m. Yeah. It's going to make the delinquent tax collector's job a little easier. Yeah, Dave, you just. Yeah. When is the next tax? You got, you got a break, um, Dave. We'll do. Tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So when was it actually passed? Like last week, May thirteenth. Like everything else that has to do with this pandemic, everything happens at the last minute. Mm -hmm. And then it changes. And then it changes. Yeah, I how about the get my pieces program? out of the oven. <laughs> okay, and now I have one last thing. Um, Mitch Osecki contacted me saying that. Um, Corinne, it's hard to hear you. Uh, can you get a little closer? Thanks. The Middlesex, the Planning Commission applied for a grant for $20,000 from the Vermont Department of Housing and Community Development for a design of a walkable bike um, path in the village center. Um, they now want it to start taking the money for this. And um, I went back in the minutes when you guys talked about it. And I think it was something that Sarah said the um, planning commission had originally mentioned or something like that to us or, or I guess somebody from the state came maybe. Um, and there was, um, it said the town's portion would be 10% and we were told at the time it could be an in-kind contribution. Um, so I don't have a copy of the awarded grant or anything like that, the terms of it. I got Mitch for it. I haven't received it yet. 
Um, but I just want you guys to, I mean, we, I guess we didn't even know it was awarded. So I thought you were going to say we never formally approved it and we needed a motion to say we cleared them to apply, but that's not the case. No, I guess we, we cleared them to apply for it, and, but this is the first that I heard it was awarded. Um, and he's saying our match is 2,250. Um, from the minutes, it says 10%, which would have been 2,000. And I don't know if you want to do in-kind contributions or um, you know, where the, our portion is coming from. Good question. Yeah. How could we do in-kind contribution? What kinds of things qualify? Excavator. Yeah. <laughs> Truck. Um. <clears throat> Are they actually going to build the roads? I mean, I thought this was a planning grant, not so. They hired a consultant, I guess, to work on a design, but that's what this grant is for, was for the consultant, from what I understand. So how do you do 10% uh, when it's to hire a consultant? You can't use an excavator for that. Oh, you can't, Mary, right. <laughs> Good point. Discretionary. Well, I mean, this, this, I, I know I'm. I know I'm backing up, and Sandy's no longer in the, on the meeting. But I, I mean it. I was completely blindsided by that energy plan. I thought the, I thought the, the planning commission's number one project for this year was the zoning regulations, and all of a sudden we're presented with a schedule for this energy plan, and I don't even know what the energy plan is. I, not very good communication from them, I don't think. But anyway. Well, Mitch isn't doing much better. I mean, is he also on the planning commission? I mean, is this a planning commission thing? Is that what you yeah, said? Sandy is the Sandy is the chair. Sure. Chair. Sure. Sure. Mm. Whoop! I can't hear you, Vic. I think he's talking to somebody else. Oh, okay. All right. Um. Anyway. It is, it is what it is, but I mean, I didn't know anything. About, did any of you know or remember anything about any comprehensive energy plan? No. Right aren't the, the zoning world? regs due? I'm sorry, for what? Renewal? Aren't the zoning regs due for renewal for yes, every five years? Yes, they are. That's why so, we did the town plan last year, so we could do the zoning regulations right. this year. Hmm. And now what's going to happen is the zoning regulations are going to get push, pushed off or likely get pushed off into some kind of some kind of special uh, town meeting, which I hate. But anyway, I'm glad I'm glad they're working and I'm glad they're doing stuff. But I mean, the question I was going to ask, which I didn't ask, is do we really? Why do we need an energy plan? <laughs> anyway, if I'm off base, you can you can all tell me that. But I thought it was a little strange. Well, I mean, I think yeah. it's supposed to address situations like this ages, you know, the Kingsbury thing. So that when it comes up, we have something in place, but we may never have anything else that comes up like this. So you don't know. Yeah, but the, but, yeah. But the, the thing I don't understand, Mary is, and maybe it's, I just don't understand. It isn't really in our jurisdiction anyway. So what difference does it mean if we have an energy plan or not? We don't, we don't regulate it. No, we don't regulate it, Peter, but I think the energy plan does hold a little weight, and that would be it. But it would have been nice to have uh, have a draft or know they were working on it. Well, that's, that's, all, that's all I'm saying. Application for this uh, for this grant, yeah, because it seems to me like we're going to have to put two thousand dollars up. Sounds that way to me too. I have yeah. to admit. Yeah. Yeah. Unless Sarah could do some, you know, or or um, David could do some uh, computer work or something like that. Well, Ethan, it isn't like two thousand dollars is going to break the bank, but no. I'm just going to refresh your memory that this was a grant that was pushed by Planetary Matters. Uh, right. Uh, exactly. Senate and and. Um, and Mike Pelcher, when they came in and said it would be, I think it's worth going back to them and saying, I don't, I, they should be contributing to the grant, but they seem to have 
think that this would be no problem, no cost to the town. And I'm surprised to know that there's this $2,000 bill stuck on us. That really kind of benefits them. You know, it's well, great. Why don't, why don't we ask if they'll contribute the $2,000? I think that was discussed before. I think it was. But I don't, what, what are the ethics of that? The ethics? I mean, they're the ones who wanted to do it. So I don't think there's any harm in asking. You right. know, they right. seem to have the money because they bought the house and then they bought the other house. Well, so, they're the ones they're the ones who want this this revitalization. They want the bike paths and they want to see if that can, this can, you know, well, you you know, you're saying the same thing. I mean, I think they have the money. Yeah. Met the oh. guy with the hearts too. Whatever. Today. We've got a, I, and I'm I'm very supportive of a lot of the stuff they're doing, but you know, it's the hitching post today, the $2,000 for this tomorrow, the this, the that. I mean, they're kind of overrunning us, I think. Don't forget you know, about the massive food up. drive they're going to have. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Wait a I mean, you know, they are the only people who've made a concerted effort to do anything in town. And I don't know about you, but I mean, I took a picture of those hearts and I sent them to all my friends around. I mean, you know, it's like, they're oh, doing Mary, I think a lot. I think a lot of the stuff they're doing is great stuff. I just think we need to we need to keep an eye on them. That's all I'm all I'm suggesting. And understanding when they come in with these casual things like, oh, we're going to go ahead and apply for this grant, this that. It's not going to cost you anything. Well, we just need to hold their feet to the fire. That's all. Well, I think holding their feet to the fire is we'll ask them if they can meet the match for the town because they said it wouldn't cost us anything. There's no harm in. There, right. There's no harm in asking. Right. Well, and do it before we finalize the grant. I mean, have we, yeah. have we actually finalized the grant yet? According, no. to, according <laughs> to Mitch's email to me, it says funds are due to be dispersed in three installments. The first 40 percent and the second 30 percent will be direct disbursements. The final 30 percent will be reimbursed. And um, he said that he hasn't applied. I haven't requested the initial disbursement, but hope to do so in the next couple of weeks. I well, would. We need a I, copy of the grant agreement uh, before he does anything. Yeah. Well, I, I asked for one. And you have to write him and say we're not proceeding with this until we get a copy. Uh, until I get a copy of the contract. And the sounds term. like he's proceeding. It sounds like he's proceeding with us or without us. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's got, I mean, we know he has that tendency to go off on uh, and do things that that can cause us trouble later. So I think you have to really rein him in and say, we're not doing anything until we get this contract mm -hmm. and we go over the terms and the select board understands it. Okay, I'll write him another one tomorrow. And then I think somebody's got to ask the uh, planetary matters for cough up the money. Before, before we, send a letter. I, before we I mean, what I'm concerned about is I, I think this grant maybe is all done. I mean, I'd be you curious to know who signed for this grant. For the if, they, if they don't do what we want, we'll just say, sorry, we don't want to proceed with it because of coronavirus. <laughs> uh, whatever. Well, his, but I mean, uh, his initial line is the planning commission was awarded the funding. So it must be the planning commission applied for it. Well, right, but I well, mean, I they did apply for it. They did, and we all agreed on that. Right. So I think the I think the idea was that uh, there would be no money going out of the town, but maybe I'm wrong about that. I believe you're right on that too, Peter. But I I agree with Mary. I'd like to see uh, I'd like to see exactly what that twenty thousand dollars does in that grant. Well, they I mean, already hired a consultant. Yeah. They already hired Du Bois and King. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, it seems like the town has control. I mean, the select board has control over the planning commission, and we can always well, reject. No, it doesn't. Yeah, here's a wait a minute. Here, here's a question, and, and, and maybe this gets to the meat of the matter. Does the planning commission, on its own stick, so to speak, have the ability to obligate the town to anything? That's my can question. They go ahead and apply for grants without our consent. Can they obligate us to two thousand dollar matches without our consent? I don't think so. 
I don't think so either. They are separately elected. It doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, I don't think they have the authority to obligate they're, money. They're not, they're not, yes. They, they don't have as part of their official duties the ability but, to obligate down. Right. I don't. But in the well, and the other part of this is we're gonna have to administer this grant, correct? They're not gonna administer it. Are they? Do you know, Sarah? I believe that this the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, as I can vaguely recall. Was uh, was checked like Dorinda and I just discussed that on the grant application that the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission would administer the grant with the town. So it would be they're, somehow they're involved. It's the with the town part that makes me nervous. Yeah, so well, I think that sounds Mitch, like you and Dorinda. No, no. When uh, when Mitch first started talking to me about this last year, so I'm, I'm you know I try to minimize whatever I have to do with grants for obvious reasons and. Mitch said, okay, I'll take, I'll, well, I'll do it. He had the portal and, but I believe they checked the box and I think Peter, you signed it. I don't know. I'll go find a copy if I can. <laughs> Oops. Great. But somewhere in that grant proposal. Oh, one of those pieces of paper you slid across in front of me. <laughs> yeah, really. Somewhere in that grant proposal, there must be something that outlines what the in-kind match would have been. I would think so. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's why I asked for it. He also said that he was advised that the town treasurer should create an account for this grant to facilitate the tracking of its uh, Sucks. Well, wait a second. Somebody's got to tell Mitch he can't be calling calling the shots on this thing. I mean, that's what makes me nervous when you make him and give him another office. <laughs> God knows what, where he'll go with that. <laughs> that's that's an easy one. Yeah. Well, look at all the trouble we got in with his zoning administrative duties, and we never really did anything about it. Yeah. Well, well I'll, email, I'll email follow up with him again tomorrow and tell him we have to have it ASAP and um, to hold off on requesting any disbursement. And then yeah. it has to be done through you <laughs> until further. <laughs> Until you, you know, I mean, if it's going to be administered by somebody else, we, we don't have any control over it. <laughs> well, the, the, the truth of the matter is, though, we approve this. I mean, the only the only part yeah. that's the only part that's in question is the two thousand two hundred and fifty dollar or whatever it is match. Right. So uh, I don't I don't mind. I mean, I, I don't want to. I don't want to micromanage the planning commission. That's the last thing I want to do. But I, I would like to generally understand what they're up to. And obviously tonight I did not. So maybe I should go to a few of their meetings. Just what I need. Anyway. You all set, Dorinda? Yeah. Is that the end of your report, Dorinda? That's the end of my report. And Peter, there's still a document down at the town hall waiting for you to sign for a Welch Park. No, 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 I he signed it. Oh, you signed, I, he it? signed oh. it? It's all taken care of. Oh, okay, because it was still in my mailbox. Okay, that, great. That's, no, that I know. I never. Book. It turned out I could e-sign it, and I I e-signed it like the next day or something, and it's taken okay. care of. I'm uh, sorry that that didn't get communicated. What was the document, Peter? I'm sorry, it was a fee agreement for an insurance policy. Did we ever get anything back from the lawyer about, you know, all these bylaws and stuff? I mean, that's been kind of hanging around. I mean, it isn't it is it isn't the lawyer, Mary. It's it's the Benderson guy. Okay, he has signed, Benderson has never signed the documents, the amendments. And we still don't have a bookkeeper to replace Dorinda either while we're talking about that. I don't know what we, I don't know what we do. I mean, this, this is an unwarned item, but it just, just an observation. Um, you know, I'm thinking more and more and the lawyer absolutely does not recommend it. I called and talked to him, but if it was up to me, I'd figure out a way to do away with this Welch Park thing. Every time I hear the word Welch Park, a cold shiver goes up my spine. Yeah, too. well, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm on the board and I don't even get copies of the documents. <laughs> you know, it's pretty well, scary. Well, Mary, there are, 
I mean, we had we had the documents at one point in time that that was that was four or five months ago. I would, uh, the, last, the last I had anything to do is John O'Reilly came in and said he would draft the changes. And that's the last I, I I've never gotten anything since then. So we have those amendments, Sarah, correct? We have them in the Welch Park file. Which which ones? The the amendments the to the Welch Park, whatever it is, agreement. We have the old ones. We don't have any new ones. No, well, these are the ones which go back to last winter. But John O'Reilly, I mean, John O'Reilly, he came in, was it November, December? I don't remember. I don't, there were no amendments form, uh, submitted. You guys drafted some, but there was none voted on and approved. Yeah, but opinion. I've never, I've never seen oh, no, 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 no. We've, 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 we've signed them on behalf of the town. Everyone has signed them except for Welch Park. Right. So we John Riley, I, they are not in this office. Peter, uh, John did not submit them. They are not part of the files here. I would have reported them. They have not been reported. Okay. So maybe some, mm -hmm. I will, I will get a hold of John and get copies of well, those what documents. I'm saying is that I'm a member of the board. The last communication was John said he'd draft them. I've never seen a draft. I've never signed anything. And it, I mean, you know, okay, but you know, I am a member of the select board and if I've got this obligation, it would be nice if I saw the documents. I agree, Mary, I agree. I will call them and make sure we have a copy. I thought we had a copy of them. But somehow we've got to get to the end of this Welch Park thing. Right. And, I and think our, our, fearless, our fearless leader who gets all revved up and makes about five phone calls and then disappears for months doesn't make it, doesn't make it easy. And I am, not, uh, I am not interested in being the new fearless leader, I can tell you that. Sure. Considering this, this wasn't a, a warned agenda item, you know, it might be a good idea to put, put this on the next agenda. And I agree. I agree see if Phil. we can have some real discussion about where we go with this. Yep. Great I agree. Night. Okay, so moving right along. Approving May 19th, 2020 select board minutes. Do we have a motion? So moved. Move. Second. Okay, thank you. All in favor uh, of the can motion? I correct, can I just correct that? It's May 5th. Today is May 19th. I just had a typo. Sorry. So it's May 5th. Oh, okay. I read, the, I read it right off the agenda. I should have known that. Motion. Oh, so Through the May 5th minutes. Okay. Mary and Phil. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We've approved them. Okay. Here we go. Approving the listener's request to reserve the right to request an extension for filing of the 2020 town grand list. Peter, may so I, I guess, can I just clarify this for you guys? So yes. this, this is something that's come from the state department of, of, of tax, the state tax department. They're basically asking all listers in every town to do this just as a precaution. Uh, the listers, our listers have absolutely no intention of using the, uh, this extension. In fact, they plan on, on filing the grand list by the end of this month. Okay. So and they you. plan on going forward with grievances in the beginning of June. So this is just a pro forma thing. So why would we do it? Yeah. Because the state department, state taxation department saying you guys, every single town should do this just in case something happens. Should do this. Should, yes. They're not, they can't require <laughs> accounts to do it, but they, they are, strongly urging and so the listers are asking it's just like if something goes wrong they have this as a backup because if you they don't do it I forget what happens I remember filing for this extension before when uh what's his face was doing the townwide reappraisal so right it doesn't mean they are going to it just means that if something happens they won't get we won't get in trouble with the state I think the state would have better things to do than do this. Yeah, wouldn't you? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll move uh, that we uh, approve the uh, extension. Second. Or the opportunity for the extension. Opportunity, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Is there a so, second? Reserve right Steve. to. <laughs> Steve seconded? Yes. Yes. 
All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, another wonderful title. Designating road foreman Paul Simonera as the COVID-19 health and safety officer for the town. Wow. That's an honor. This has ah. to be, every town has to do this under the governor's guidelines. And since Paul's the only one with employees, it seems like that makes sense. Plus he's married to a nurse. Are you so Paul, you Paul? Is Paul okay with this? Yes. Is Paul Sarah, had, Sarah had mentioned a, a healthy uh, benefit package <laughs> and a pay increase. So I was on board. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. okay. Just yeah. want to be sure. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Paul, are you guys uh, still working with this or are you back together? Say that, say that again, Mary. Are you still doing a split shift? Are you guys all back together again? Because they're you're they're less you're less than ten, and are is everybody coming in every day, or are you? Everybody's coming in every day. We're still on eight hour days, but I I'm I'm still splitting my time, and and most weeks I'm I'm unable to get forty hours, but we're we're making it work anyway. Okay. And that's for the foreseeable future, right? All the school situations are over, which is, is not, that's the only reason. Okay. Oh, Thank gotcha. You. Yeah. I'll move that we uh, um, appoint uh, whatever the... <laughs> the COVID-19 <laughs> health and safety officer. And safety yes, officer. that. <laughs> I second. There you go. Thank you. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor of the motion, I'm getting, doing the executive summary version of these motions. Um, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, congratulations, Paul. Another title to add to your resume. <laughs> okay, considering a letter of support for CB Fibers grant application for their Northern Border Regional <laughs> Commission application for an economic and infrastructure Development Investment Program Grant. This is you, you Phil? You already signed the letter, yeah, didn't you? Did. Nail it out? What's that? Didn't Peter already sign it? I thought I saw it already signed and everything and mailed out. I don't think so. No, uh, we just got a copy of it. Yeah. No. Um, anyway, yeah, it's just a, a grant opportunity that we uh, want to apply for. We've just finished our feasibility study um, and we'll be now headed toward a business plan. Uh, and then we're gonna, I mean, there's a lot of funding out there right now. So it's a matter of trying to balance um, what we can get a hold of. Obviously the more grants we can get, the less we have to borrow as we, as we move forward. But uh, the possibility of millions upon millions upon millions of dollars um, could become available in the near future. So, uh, but this is just one thing that we're looking for. And we're trying to get all of our communities plus some businesses in the area to um, just sign a letter of support. We signed one at Capstone. Yeah, that's right. I heard that. So I move that we um, approve the letter and send it out. I'll second that. Okay, Peter's on the phone. <laughs> we moved there and seconded it, Peter. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. 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 Opposed? Sorry about that, guys. A, a dear old family friend is in the final uh, stages of her life, and that was my sister. So anyway. Aww. Oh, not I'm happy, sorry. Not a happy day in the Hood family. No. Yeah, met her. Yeah. I know who you're talking about. Okay, so. George. Orders. We've done the orders, or we will do the orders. Correspondent, Sarah. You uh got the letter from betsy davis yes. yeah yeah so that's our correspondence okay so do right. we do we return i mean obviously we read the letters we look at them do we routinely respond to these letters no 
just kind of if you want to say, I'll shoot Betsy a note and say the board talks about it, talked about it, and here's the minutes. Yeah. What do we do in the minutes? I don't know. I just, I just think somehow we, we ought to acknowledge that we received and read the letter. We really well, talked I about usually it. email people back if they, if they email us, but when they do an attachment, I guess I didn't. I was thinking of emailing her back. I never CC anybody because then it becomes a meeting. Right. Um, but, um, but, you know, I think I, I, the only thing that I, I was going to say to her was um, that, you know, we weren't looking at, you know, turning it, it was really more about addressing the issues around the fact that there's a pond there instead. I just biked through it again last night and I like, it gets, it's really high, it's deep. You know, you're really, you can't walk through it. You would get completely soaked if you walked through it. Right. So how so, deep well, it's, I just, I just think as a matter of practice, somehow we should be, even if we just say we acknowledge the receipt of your letter and it is select board members have all read it or whatever we say. If Obviously, if we have some discussion about it and we take some action on it, then we should definitely let them know. But if we just sort mm -hmm. of take it under an advisement, it seems to me that it's polite to say, you know, thank you for your interest in this subject. We will... Yeah. Well, let's. I, I think that we should have Sarah write a letter and attach the minutes, like just like she said, and and indicate that we all read it and we understand our concerns. Yeah, Peter, uh, to clarify yes. when someone writes me, I say thank you, you know, Betsy, um, you know, I'll bring it to the select board, that type of thing, usually something like that. And then I write them back and say the board considered it last night, and here's here, here's a copy of the minutes. It just seems like the at least they know they've been heard, that it was discussed. It wasn't just round filed, you know? Yeah. Exactly. No, that's all That's all I'm looking for. I just think it's, I want to be sure we're being polite to these people who take the time to mm -hmm. write to us. So do you right. want to, besides Liz, does anybody want to say anything about that letter? I just thought that maybe she was a little concerned that like we were going to start, you know, turning it into a class three road or something like that. Right. When really, you know, I think the conversation was really about how can we make it passable for walkers and bikers at the very mm -hmm. least, which it's not passable right now. And so I think she was worried that we were going to do some major upgrades that made it so that, you know, people could start driving through and mudding and all that kind of stuff, which is kind of what they already do. But like, <laughs> it's um and continue to do well, it, right? I, think we've, I think we've agreed we're going to block the road off so hopefully we're going to prevent some of that mudding activity yes exactly um but we're not blocking it off to walkers and bikers Absolutely. No. no 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 right no. No. Wait a second. So. And we're not paving it until next year right i mean and we have no money to do any upgrades anyway so we don't even have money to deal with the um I kept seeing those emails um, and it wasn't clear to me, um, it wasn't clear to me if somebody wanted to get together with the beaver guy about the, you know, about the grates that you would put up or whatever it was you would put up. And like, yeah. Paul, I think he asked if, and did he ever show up that Tyler guy? And who was that Tyler guy? I don't know if Paul's still listening. He says he's here, but he may not be listening. I'm sorry, I'm trying to cooking dinner and folding laundry. So we met with Tyler, um, with Tyler up at the site. And what we're what we figured out was right now, because it's uh, trout spawning season and the trout are fishing upstream, um, they've recommended that we wait until the beginning of June. And then with help from Tyler, well, Tyler's guidance, and then uh, with Rupert, we're going to slowly start to lower the water level safely because the the Helbert is obviously completely blocked. Uh, at that point, as we lower the, the water level, that should get us to the point where spawning season is over. And then uh, Tyler can go ahead and start putting up the, the um, device that he'll use to, to block the beavers from plugging the, the culvert, at least hopefully on them, you know. Tyler, and are we paying him to do this? I no, Ty we Tyler is the fur bearer specialist for the state. Yeah. Okay. There's a good title. And I he's want to be the next fur bearer like, specialist. But are we paying him to do this? No, this no. this is a this is an off of the, yeah, this is through through the state wildlife management. Yeah. Oh, nice. There's no cost to the to the town and for this. Who has the unusual last name that no one can pronounce? But no, slip. this this is Tyler Brown. This is different than oh, um not, than than not, the gentleman from the trail access. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Cool. Hey, I think we should buy a town kayak and people can ferry themselves across. Hey, P hey, Paul, I had a question though while I have you on this. So I was bi I biked through that last night and um, and when you get, we, and I was coming from going past hunger uh, on the right. Um, so in that direction. And then when you get towards the next house, there's this, on the right are these, um, is like a big um, hill. Is that an old beaver dam or is that something that, like that, that's overgrown? Uh, to be honest, Liz, I, I'm not 100% sure. I, I, I have not driven all the way. You're saying more towards the, the East Bear Swamp side? Yes. Yeah, yeah I, I've actually not since last year when I originally met with John Udis and, and Mary Nealon have I uh, have I driven through there. So to be honest, I, I can't even speak to it. Yeah, I just wonder if it was an old beaver dam from a long time ago, because it looks it looks like a beaver dam, but it's now it's totally overgrown with grass. No, you know, a lot of it, they, they had done some pretty extensive logging in there, kind of in the oh, okay. beginning when I'd first moved to town, 2009, 10, 11. So there, that's probably a lot of the remnants of that. I see, yeah. Who is they? Peter, this right. is Steve. I, I've got to get going, so I think we've gone through everything we need to vote on anyway, right? Well, can, can we yeah. just, just do, while Paul is here, can you just guys just sign off on the, on the uh, access permit on Nellie Chase Road? We've got, a, we've got enough people to do that, Mary. Yeah, we're good. I'm Mary. Sarah. Sarah. I'm I just sorry. had a quick question about that Nellie Chase Road, though. Are we planning on reopening it to a class three? Because remember, they said, well, we're selling all these land, and now this is going to be a second driveway on there. No, that, that's not that, that part portion, of the class. Yeah, no, that, that is a class three road already, Liz. Oh, that, okay. Yeah, no. So where is this? the Seth Stewart um, spot. Steve, go ahead. Goodbye. All Good right, night. Thank Bye, you. Steve. I'll see Steve you in the morning. Bye, Longmire. The, the driveway that uh, Seth is looking to put in, Mary, is is just across from the, the driveway he put in last year, which would be uh, Eric Chase's and uh, the IAZO's property. Eric Chase? Um, I think yeah, it's on his land, Paul. Correct. It, it's on it's on Seth's land, correct? That he purchased from yeah. the Iazos. Yeah. Oh, he bought the all all green lights in my eyes. I got it. Move approval of the access permit, Seth Stewart. Second. On Ace Road. Okay. Full second. seconds. Yeah. All those in favor of approving the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, I think we have completed our assignment for this evening. Peter, I have one other thing. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, Paul's in really desperate need of some new technology, um, so and uh, so that he can basically take um, information back and forth. So. Um, Sarah had indicated that the Chromebook, which we had intended to use as the new public computer, can't be used to access the ACS records. Is that right, Sarah? Unfortunately, yes. Yes. So that means we have to replace the public current public computer, uh, which we've had a couple of uh, near catastrophes with, but it, it keeps rebooting and but uh, we are going to have to replace that. Um, I think I think I can do that for about 500. There are some really good prices right now um, on Dell, and we've got a connection there. So what I'd like to do is to take that Chromebook and have that go to Paul and get assistance, however we need to do it, to get files move to the cloud for him so that he has access from wherever he is to get those and um, get a purchase order in for a new um, CPU for the public computer. I think we're okay with monitors. We've got two or three monitors around, so that should be a problem. Again, more money, um, but uh, I, I, it's, it's really the only way I see of us being able to uh, to achieve both things with, you know, uh, 
getting the right stuff for Paul to work and also then able to now do is this, well. is this so he can work at home or work at his office? He'll use it for both. So but he'll carry it around with him? Yeah. Yeah, rather what? than being desk-bound to an old, an old PC that's not particularly I'm working. outside and I get chilly. Yeah. Wow. What's yeah, that? Of course, it cools down a little bit. You want You can have a cocktail instead of wine or whatever you want. <laughs> he hasn't there. got out of his meeting. Well, okay. I don't see him. I don't see him on here. That's really we Oh, it's Deborah. I'll go to mute him. Okay. I'll kick him out. Oh, mute him. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. It sounds like, sounds like he had a cocktail party to go to. Yeah. yeah. Right now. I was like, where else are you going? No one's going anywhere these days. <laughs> Eve, AKA Deborah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great world, isn't it? <laughs> so Phil, where, just, just quickly, um, any, any updates on where we are with getting our other computers going and our emails up and all that stuff? We're, you know, we're sitting waiting right now. I can, I can, uh, you know, talk to RB. We did extend the contract, Peter, for, six months with RB uh, to uh, which you and I had talked about just so that we yep. don't have to uh, go out and seek proposals while we're in the middle of this COVID thing. Um, I can, you know, we're like half set up. I certainly can uh, figure out with them the best way to finish that set up and get those in place. Um, I guess that would be a matter of working that out with you, Sarah, in terms of you know, access to the <laughs> office, uh, or whether they just come and take a compute, take the computers and take them back to their shop and do that. But oh, I can. Did you, did you get the message today from the other people? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll uh, follow up on that. Alrighty. So, what do you think about the the Chromebook going to Paul and then looking? I support it, Phil. Me huh? too. Yeah. Okay. No, I think we need to. I think we need to do it. He he needs to have working computer access. He does. If it also means a better. Now, does he have decent internet access at his house? It it's probably as good as he can get. It's not great, but for now, he's got what he can get. I'm sure. Yeah. He's not on the phone, anymore, right? What's up? He is. He is. He's yeah. folding he laundry. Yeah. 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 Come down guys, to my I, house to I, help I, after he gets done. Wait a I can't see him. Right? <laughs> I've got decent enough internet for for doing document stuff. Yeah. As, as long as we're not streaming videos, then then we're in trouble. Right. But okay. I just need it to be able to access emails. I, I cannot do that from my my cell phone because of the way that the Xfinity app uh, platform yeah. is. I, I can't access anything that's not in my inbox. Right. And I don't have. I can't process payroll. You know, over my phone, and I, I'd rather not use my old home computer that's uh quite frankly you know full of you know not nothing that the town needs to be involved with in regards to <laughs> safety software let's not go into that well you, you know there's there's no safety protection on it at this point it's yeah. all expired yeah yeah and whereas with the chromebook you don't need any of that you're basically going to be working in the cloud but like right. you said for documents or a spreadsheet that's all text-based stuff and I've right. used Chromebooks for years, and they're 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 pretty fast, actually. Yep, excellent. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Well, I would just so, I would just put the heat on on RB to come back with us a plan. I mean, we've had those new computers for months. Let's get them. Let's get let's them going. It. Whatever. It okay. Takes. I'll hit. I'll take care of that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I do have one other quick thing. Uh, Steve and Paul and I are meeting tomorrow morning at eight o'clock. Right, Paul. Right, Paul. He's on mute. Sorry. Yep. Um, um, yeah. I'm doing doing dinner. Yes. Uh, tomorrow no, okay. morning. We're almost call. done. We're we're meeting at the uh, at the state parking lot up on the road up to the on, town for us to try road. and work some more on that on that issue. I'm not exactly sure what we're hoping to get accomplished. It was the state guy who reached out to us, Steve and I, and I believe. Yeah. Uh, Paul it's. Still, whoop. Go ahead, Paul. No, it, uh, it's Tim Appleton, who we met with earlier this winter before before the pandemic stuff. Now that the snow's gone, we're just trying to 
touch base with him again in regards in regards to uh, you know, what what they're they're looking for, what what they'd be willing to help out with, and anything like that. So just just a preliminary, more of an exploratory uh, meeting. Right. It's right. not particular to the road. It's just that's the meeting place, right? They're just talking about what what kind that's of. That's correct. It's it's strictly to do with the with the parking lot. Okay. Oh, you. The parking lot, meaning the um, the, the state parking park. lot, Mary. I'm sorry. The state parking lot, which is at the end of our Class Three road, which we now use for our snowplow turnaround. Okay. Where's that? Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> it's like, where is it? Did you just burn? Did we talk about this last week? Oh yes, wait. Yes. Okay, right. Okay, you're talking you know, about. I mean, there's. I'm just telling you, we're we're meeting. I think I think we are moving ever closer to telling the state to, you know, do whatever you want to do with your parking lot. I'm glad you let us turn our truck around in there. If we do anything, we're going to create a town parking lot down at the old pit, and people okay, can hike up the road. Right. And that's what we're doing. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay, good night, everyone. Thank you very Wait, much. Does, does Vic want to say anything? Yes, he does. <clears throat> yes, oh, he does. Oh, I'm sorry, Vic. Um, I was just wondering, has, uh, has the uh, date for the meeting this uh, Saturday from 10 to noon been changed? Somebody said it's going to be on the 12th, but I don't see anything official. I thought it was May 23rd. What right, May 20th. Is it still going to be May 23rd? No, Vic, we had this conversation just this weekend. It is June 7th and it's on the, been on the website for over a week. Okay, okay. Um, we did have that conversation, but uh, obviously it's not getting out to uh, the people around because a lot of people think it's gonna be Saturday. Okay, I'll put a- so Maybe you wanna put it on Front Porch Forum is all I'm saying. Just just suggesting that I'm not telling you what to do. All right, I will. Put no, I think that's a good idea. We don't want to have a bunch of people showing up Saturday. Yeah, there seems to be uh, for some reason. I don't plan on attending, but uh, a lot of people are interested in going. Okay, I will put it on. I'm going to write the post as soon as this meeting is over. Very Great. good. Very good. That's it. Thank you. Thank you yeah, for the okay. time. Thanks, Vic. Yep. Where's that meeting okay. going to be? going to be behind the fires it's going to be behind town hall uh by the fire station in the park old fire station the old fire station yeah social distancing in the parking lot <laughs> all right productive meeting okay. uh, we're getting there guys thank you all again i mean this is this is uh i hope we're getting a little uh a little better at this it still feels a little struggling to me when it's just us it goes fine when we have when we have a lot of other people it's uh it's a challenge but i'm glad i think we're i think we're through with that uh <laughs> with the uh with the solar project i hope we are don't forget yeah. you have a don't forget five o'clock uh on thursday the 21st oh are you going to send us an email about that sarah I will send yes. you an email with it. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to write the agenda for that. I'm going to post this stuff on Front Porch Forum. So it'll be there on Wednesday, both the meeting for the for the informal road meeting and then also the okay. uh, agenda for this this bill. Do you okay. use just I just have to ask, do you use the same link for your Zoom meetings for all Zoom meetings? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. OK. I just want to know if the next time I go on, it's going to be this, this link. That's what I said. I think that if you the meeting ID stays the same and you don't think, have to have a password. Yeah, I think it does. Makes sense. Okay. I, mean, I know that's what happens with mine and what happens when I do this other this class that I take. It's always the same meeting ID. Yeah. Okay. If you're a host. Right. Okay. Great. All right. Good night, good night everyone. See you Everybody Thursday. have a good night. Bye. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Vic. Bye. Bye. Bye.